zone is totally dark because the sunlight doesn't pass through this, this zone, right? So it is totally dark. And coming to the temperature, it is very cold in this final zone, which is a basal zone. And friends, do you know uh, the animals are mostly pred predators and scavengers? Friends, do you know about predators? This is a new word, right? Predators. Okay, let me give an example. For example, let us take grasshopper. Grasshopper. So, again here frog. So, the frog will eat the grasshopper, right? So, the grasshopper will become the prey and the frog will become the predator. Okay, the grasshopper will become the prey and the frog will become the predator. I think you get an idea about predator, okay? So, the uh, animals which live in this zone are mostly predators and scavengers, okay? And friends, look at this slide. So, here we can able to see some animals which live in this zone. So, these, uh, these deep sea animals are mostly predators and scavengers. You already learned that. So, here this is the brittle star and this is the anglerfish. They can able to survive in this cold conditions also. They can able to survive in the final zone also. Do you know that? So the second thing is the large forms or the large forms have wide mouths and huge curved teeth. Friends, if, if you observe here, it has wide mouth and it has sharp teeth and it is very curved, right? Okay. And friends, do you know another thing? The animals which live in this abyssal zone ha doesn't have skeleton. That means they doesn't have bones. Okay. So, this is the adaptation of the marine life or the marine ecosystem, okay. Now, we learn about the adaptations of the marine ecosystem and what are the, so and we learn about some more adaptation of desert plants and animals. We learn about adaptation of the aloe vera, right. So, now let us move to the adaptation of freshwater ecosystem. First, let us learn about the zones of the freshwater ecosystem. Do you get it? So, look at this please. So friends, here this is the freshwater ecosystem. So what are the zones here? The first one is littoral zone. What's this? Littoral zone and this is the, this zone will uh, takes place in the shore region. And coming to the lamantic zone, here this is the lamantic zone. And this is the profundal zone which is the final zone, okay. Friends, these are the zones in the freshwater ecosystem. Friends, I want to leave a question for you, okay. So, uh, in the marine water ecosystem, there are three zones. In the freshwater ecosystem also, there are three zones. But there is a difference between arrangements of zones in freshwater and in the marine water. So, you want to find the answer for that. It's a simple task, right? Friends, you can because you are sparrows. Remember this, okay? So, let us see what are the plants and animals can able to survive in the freshwater ecosystem. So, please look at this. So friends, the what is the first zone of the freshwater ecosystem? It is littoral zone, right? So what are the animals can able to survive in the littoral zone? Animals like insects, amphibians, snails can able to survive in the littoral zone. Look at this. Here we can able to observe frogs or some snails can and some insects in this zone, right? And many plants can able to survive in this zone because the, uh, the photosynthetic activities is of, uh, can able to take place in this zone. So that is why many plants can survive in this zone. And plants like water lily, mosses, valisneria or hydrilla. So all these plants can able to survive in the littoral zone. And coming to the second zone, it is limantic zone. So if we observe here, the zone in, which is in this region is known as limantic zone. And it has bright lit, okay? So, what are the animals can able to survive in this zone? They are cyclopes, small shrimps and some fishes can able to survive in this zone. And ducks can able to survive in this zone, okay? So, coming to the plants like hyacinth, wolfia, pistia. So, like this, these are the plants can able to survive in the second zone. And coming to the third zone, it is profundal zone. Okay, so the animals like 
crustaceans and crabs, fishes like eels can be able to survive in this zone. Okay friends, do you get an idea? I think you get an idea about the zones of marine life and at the same time the zones of aquatic ecosystem, right? Okay, now let us discuss about the water salinity of the animals. How can they manage? How, what is the adaptation of the water salinity in the fishes which can live in the marine water and in the fresh water? So now let us discuss about the water salinity. Water salinity. So uh, here there will be marine water. So this is the marine ecosystem and here let us learn about fresh water ecosystem. Okay. So friends do you know interesting thing? The, we know that marine water, uh, so the marine water means it will have higher amount of salts. That means the salt concentration is very high in this zone, in this ecosystem, right? But do you know that the salt concentration in the body of the fish is very low? Do you know that? And coming to the fresh water, so the salt concentration in the fresh water is low. But the salt concentration in the body of the fish in the freshwater ecosystem is very high. Do you know what is the reason behind that? Okay, let us discuss. So, uh, if it's happened, that means the salt concentration is quite opposite, the osmosis process can take easily. So, that is the reason uh, the salt concentration of the animals is quite opposite according to its uh, ecosystem. Okay. So, coming to the marine water ecosystem, the salt concentration in its body is low, right? So, uh, it, so the animal will take large amount of water. So, the water will go out uh, through its permeable membrane because the salt concentration at the outside is high. So, it will move to the higher concentration. And coming to the freshwater ecosystem, uh, the salt concentration uh, is low in the body of the fish, right? Uh, sorry, high in the body of the fish, right? So, uh, the, the water which is entering into the body, it will store in the body. So, that is why the fish is can able to swim in the freshwater ecosystem. So, and uh, it will excrete the, excrete the water outside to the, by, the, uh, by the urine and through the kidneys. So, whatever it may be, so that is the reason it can able to float in the water. So, this is, the, this is about the salinity of the fish adaptation in fresh water at the same time in the marine water. Do you get it? Is any doubts in it? Okay friends, I will clarify your doubts. So, please contact me. So, now friends, let us discuss about some more adaptations. Okay. So, friends, look at this slide. Now, let us discuss about adaptation in aquatic plants. We already, we already learn about aquatic ecosystem, but now let us learn about adaptations in aquatic plants. Friends, if you, have, if you observe here in this picture, we can able to find hyacinth. Hyacinth is, is nothing but a plant which grow in the aqu uh, aquatic ecosystem. Okay. So, friends, if you observe here, the plant is floating in the water, it is not sink in the water, it is floating in the water, right? So, what might be the reason? So, the leaf base of water hyacinth for, form air fillet structures to keep them afloat. So, that is the reason this is floating in the water. So, if you observe the second picture, here this is water lily, how beautiful it is, yes? So, this is also floating in the water. What might be the reason? If the adaptations are same in these both two plants? No. In water lily, leaves are flat and have an oily surface with stomato present on the upper surface of the leaf. So, that is the reason it is floating in the water. So, friends, uh, but why they want to float in the water? Why they why they doesn't why they doesn't sink in the water? What is the adaptation for them, friends? If they float in the water, they can able to get sunlight, right? So through the sunlight only they can prepare the food. So that is the reason they adapted to that situation and they can able to float in the water. So that is the adaptation of the aquatic plants. Okay, 
friends i want to say you interesting thing that in between the summer and winter winter some plants may shed down their leaves right so why they are shed down their leaves uh, wh what is the reason for that is there any adaptation in those plants okay let me say that uh, friends we know that stomato will present in the leaves right so the stomato structure will be like this uh, for example, if it is the leaf, so the stomato structure will be like a bean, right? Stomato. So, uh, what the role of the stomato? It will exchange the gases from the leaf to the surface, yes? It will take the carbon dioxide and it will release the oxygen. So, the transportation of gases and water, it, the water will also evaporate to the stomato only. So, all this process will take place in the stomato. The stomato is present in the leaf. So, uh, in the summer season, to minimize the transportation of water, to minimize or cut down the loss of water, the plants will shed down its leaf. Okay? So, that is the reason for that. Friends, how intelligent the plants are, how intelligent the animals are, they created suitable conditions of themselves to live very happily or to survive in any areas. Coming to the desert, we can't able to survive in the desert, but those plants created some suitable conditions around them to survive in the desert. So, that is why I am saying they are very clever, you know. And friends, now let us discuss about some adaptations of the animals which live in polar region. Friends, do you, uh, do you have an idea about polar region? So, it is nothing but the region is very cool. Okay. So, look at this slide friends. Here this is. Uh, so, now let us learn about the animals in the polar region. So, friends look at this. These are the, uh, what is this? This is a penguin, right? And here this is a polar bear. So, how can they survive in the polar region? And uh, friends, we know that the region is very cool, but how can these animals can survive? So, that is the adaptation for them, friends. So, let us learn what is the adaptation, okay? So, animals living in this region have a thick layer of fat deposit under the skin. So, these act as the insulators, preventing heat loss from their bodies. And fat not only insulates their body, but helps in providing heat and energy. So, that is the reason, friends. So, it have a thick layer of fat under its skin. So, what the fat do? It will help the animals to keep themselves hot. So, uh, that is why they can able to survive in extremely cold conditions. But we can't survive there, right? And those animals can't survive in our region because we are adapted to this region and they are adapted to that region only. So, that is why they can able to survive there and uh, that is why we can't survive there, okay? So, I think you get an idea about adaptation. Is there any doubts? Please contact me. Okay, friends. Now, let us learn about some interesting adaptation. So, do you know what is that adaptation? Do you know what? Are you guessing what I am going to teach? Yes, I want to teach an adaptation to you. So, look at this. So, friends, what did you observe here? Some greenish, greenish structure on the trees, right? On the branches, you can able to observe a greenish structure on the branches right but what might be the screen structure is there any plants here friends of course they are algae and fungi so they have symbiotic relationship between these two living organisms so uh, what is the symbiotic relationship friends so the fungi will provides water and minerals to the algae and what the algae will do? It will perform photosynthetic activities and supplies food in the form of sugar to the fungi. So, in this way, they can uh, they create the symbiotic relationship between these two animals. So, because of the symbiotic relationship, they can able to survive in the extreme conditions also. Friends, do you get an idea about the lichens? Okay, so uh, let us revise what we all learned in this class. Friends, do you remember what I taught to you? Okay, first we learn about habitat and hello, a phone is waiting for us. Hello, who is that? Hello. Hello, dear Swero. Hello. Hello. Hello, Swero, what's your name? Hello. 
Hello, Swero. I'm hearing your voice. Hello. What's your name? Hello. 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 Hello, Swero. Hello. Hello, Swero. Speak clearly. I'm hearing you. Hello. Hello. Speak clearly. Okay. Swero, I'm hearing your voice. Speak clearly. Okay, sorry. So now uh, I want to give an exercise for you. It's very small. Okay, friends, what you have to do is you want to observe the animals or the plants or the birds, whatever it may be, which is in your surroundings. For example, frog. So do you, uh, if you observe the frog, you can uh, write some adaptations about the frog. Okay. So if you observe, you can write. So that is why you want to observe the animals and you want to write the adaptations of those animals if you do this you can able you can remember about adaptations in future also okay you don't hello hello swero hello hello swero hello swero uh, what's your name uh, what is called on this and why they are fresh in water Okay, fine. It's very good question. So, coral, uh, so let me show you about coral reefs picture. Okay. So, look at this. Uh, look at this, friends. So, here, this is these are the coral uh, coral colonies. Okay, they are extremely beautiful. You know. So they are nothing but they are also the fauna of the aquatic life. So they can live in the aquatic region because they adapted to that situation. So they can get uh, food uh, and and water and shelter in this region. So that is why they adapted to that situation. And this they are nothing but they are also fauna which grow in the aquatic ecosystem. Okay, friends, I think your doubt is clarified, right? Okay. So friends, uh, do you remember what our exercise is? So you want to observe some animals and plants and you want to write the adaptations of them. Okay. So friends, and I want to show you a book. So which can able to, uh, which can, uh, 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 which can uh, there in our library. Okay. So friends, look at this book. This is book, big book of knowledge. So friends, uh, in this book, I learned about many adaptations of animals. Look at this. Here there are adaptations of animals in cold, re cold regions and here there are adaptations of animals which live in the desert regions and uh, there are some more adaptations here. We can able to see plant adaptations in aquatic ecosystem, in woodland ecosystem and here plants and uh, materials what is available. So all that all about the adaptation we can able to learn in this book. So friends read some books. In which is available in your library by that you can get more knowledge about the adaptations and whatever it may be so please read the books in your library okay 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 let us revise what we have learned from more by all from all these times so we spend a lot of time right so let us revise that so first we learn about habitat do you have a clear idea about habitat if not so please ask me questions okay so second thing is we learn about ecosystem. We already learned it in, this in class, right? Right. But now again we learn about the ecosystem, and we learn about different ecosystems. What are the classification of the ecosystems, right? And friends, we also learn about the adaptation. This is the new topic for you, right? Uh, so I think I explained this in a great manner. I think you understand this. So friends, if you not understand anything, so please call me, I will answer you. So we learn about adaptations of uh, aloe vera and desert plants and animals and we learn about adaptations in, of uh, aquatic life, aqua marine animals and freshwater animals and we learn about the freshwater zones at the same time, marine water zones and we also learn about many things about them, right? And we learn about the what's that salinity, salinity, and the adaptation of the fishes, and, uh, and again we learn about the animals in the polar region. What are the adaptations of the animals in the polar region? And uh, we learned about uh, why the plants shedding the leaves in some seasons, right? 
and uh, we also learn about uh, the plants which can survive in the aquatic region, aquatic ecosystem. Some plants will survive in the aquatic ecosystem, right? So, how they can survive, what is the reason, what is the adaptation of those plants, we all, uh, I, all these things we learn in this class, right? So, friends, uh, I already gave you an example that human beings also adapt the surroundings, adapt the situation. So, uh, I take uh, hello? 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 Hello, Swero, what's your name? Hello? Hello, I'm hearing you, please. Please How talk. Hello, I'm... Yeah? What's your question? My then? name is Narmada Swero. Okay, Narmada, where are you from? I'm from Kalluru, from Kamam district. Okay, Narmada, what's your doubt? Okay, tell me what's why plants, why different animals need different ecosystem? Can you explain me? What's what? What what? Why different animals have different eco different adaptation? Why plants need why animals need different types of ecosystem? Okay, okay, okay. Let me explain that. That's a fantastic question. Why different anim animals have different ecosystems? Right. So, friends, uh, if we went to the place where it is very cool, like polar region, can we able to survive there? No, because we adapted to this situation, right? So, that is why we can able to survive here. So, likewise, that uh, coming to the ecosystems also, they have different ecosystems. It is fact, we can't change the fact. So, some can survive in the ocean, so that is the ocean ecosystem or the aquatic ecosystem and coming to the land, we are surviving in the land. So, this is, this will become the terrestrial ecosystem. So, according to their adaptations, their, their ecosystems was, was classified, okay. So, coming to the polar animals, they can able to survive, they can survive in the polar region only. So, that is the, uh, so that is why they can able to live there. So, that is the ecosystem of those animals and coming to the animals like fishes, they can survive in the water. So, that is why they, uh, they can only live in the uh, aquatic ecosystem. That is why animals have different ecosystems. Did your doubt is clarified? Okay, friend, thank you very much. And friends, hello, hello, hello Swero, hello, hello, hello Swero, what's your name? Okay, thank you. Uh, Sparrows and uh, I already introduced your book, right? Okay, okay. Uh, what we are discussing, yes, about human adaptation. So, we creating uh, ourselves, uh, we are creating adaptations of ourselves. So, that is why we can able to survive in any, any season, in any region. So, if we create the adaptation, we can able to survive. Friends, finally, I want to tell you that, that uh, once the adaptation is created, that can't change and uh, that uh, to uh, to prepare an adaptation to adapt that situation it takes long period of time so friends be happy uh, don't change the adaptation don't disturb the ecosystem don't disturb the habitat it will harms you friends finally i want to thank our secretary sir for providing such a great opportunity to me and i want to thank my principal sir who encouraged me a lot and i want to thank my madam my mentor teacher, Shravanti Madam, who prepared me for this competition. And I want to thank all my dear pharaohs for listening to my class very patiently. Thanks for everyone and bye. See you again.